Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I'm going to do a prayer request video. This month is running late and I apologize brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, they're doing a lot of cable work on the road so for the first, you know, it last week of last month, April, and then the first week or two of this month they've been doing a lot of work. And then I got hit up with a uh, family reunion type thing um, for two weeks. And so I apologize, I haven't been on for a while, so normally I do these prayer requests standing outside when it's a good day. When it's a good day, you okay? Victoria, my mentor schnauzer, is underneath the table. Um, when it's a beautiful day outside, I like to stand outside doing the prayer requests, but I'm going to be putting out a few videos. There's no way to play catch up, but I do miss Bible studies with the brethren and um, getting back to doing work for the Lord. Um, but I always like to read these verses when it comes to our prayer request videos that we don't forget. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, okay, from the King James Bible for English-speaking people. Okay, we'll get into a, uh, I want to do a little talk about using the word Bible. Is it bad to use the word Bible? Uh, I mean, the arguments that are coming out and the things that brethren are arguing over, um, we'll talk about that through the scriptures when we can, and when we can't, we'll talk about it. Okay? Um, but the King James Bible, authorized 1611 version, okay, that's where you find God's perfect written word. Right? The word Bible isn't in the Holy Scriptures, but the Holy Scriptures is in the Bible. Right? Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray without ceasing. Right? I pray that the brethren are praying. And remember, the, number, the two things that can get you to stop praying is your flesh. If you start falling back into old habits, bad habits, that's one of my prayer requests. Uh, old habits, old addictions, bad habits, sin. Um, that saying about sin will keep me from God's Word, or God's Word will keep me from sin. Sin tends to keep you away from this book. Sin in your life keeps you also away from prayer. Okay? Remember, um, in the Psalms, King David wrote that if I hold iniquity in my heart, that's another way of saying sin, iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. Another way to keep God from hearing your prayers is sin. But oftentimes, you find yourself not praying as often as you used to. Yeah, you got your normal praying like you do before you eat and everything like you did, like I did as a false convert when I was lost. But when you get saved and born again, there's so much more prayer. You pray when you're out there working. You pray when you're, not just when you're eating. You pray before you read at night. Uh, you pray before you actually close your eyes. You pray when you go for walks. You pray, pray, pray. It becomes a very vital, important part of your life, and it should as a Bible-believing, God-fearing, Christian man or woman. Okay? But pray without ceasing. It, prayer is a very important part of our life. That's why I'm trying to do these videos for prayer requests. So if you want others to pray for you, remember, make sure you take it to God first yourself. And then pass it my way. I love praying for brethren, but I always ask you, did you take it to God first yourself? Okay? Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, not some things, not when you feel like it, everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Request. Remember how that is. It's a request. These, when I go through my list of requests, we don't demand anything from God. We don't expect that God just, it's guaranteed, uh, you know, we still ask God for it. Like food, God, the Bible says, Jesus talked about how he closed the lilies of the field. How much more important is man that he created than the, the flowers of the field? Especially those that are his. Okay? But we still ask him for it. I still ask him to keep for the clothes I have on my back. I still thank him for the clothes I have on my back in prayer. I still ask him for food. I still pr thank him for the food that he's provided. Okay? You don't expect and you don't demand it's a request. Let our requests be made known unto God. You come to him humble, remembering who Jesus is. He's a capital K King. He's a capital L Lord. He's God manifest in the flesh. Some people get too familiar with God and they forget who he is, who Jesus is. He's God. Okay. James 1.5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. 
There it is again. We don't demand. It's not guaranteed. We ask God for wisdom. And that'll be a study I've been talking about lately, just getting into with my family member, and I think the wisdom of this world, especially I'm looking at some of my lost family members that profess to be Christians, and I look back and go, that was me, Lord. Their wisdom, they'll quote stuff that's not even in the Bible, or they'll make, they'll make a mess of stories in the Bible and everything. It's like, that was me as a false convert. Okay? But when we lack wisdom, truly saved, born again, when we lack wisdom, who do we go to? We go to God. When there's something in this book that we don't understand, we ask God to help us. Open our eyes. If it seems like a contradiction, we don't believe in contradictions. So what it is, is I'm not getting it. I'm not seeing it somehow, Lord. This book is absolute truth. There's no contradictions. But there's things in here I don't understand. Lord, open my eyes. And it's a request, again. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask. You're asking. God, please open the scriptures to me. You're not demanding. That giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. You come to God in a meek spirit, treating God as God. I know it's hard for some people. As God, as a king, capital K, king, capital Lord. And you ask him, Lord, please show me. My heartfelt desires, I want to know this so I can hide it in my heart. The Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So I can apply it to my life. God knows the heart. And anybody who's sincere, he's going to open the scriptures to you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay. John 17, 15 says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of this of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil. You know, one of the things that we tend to lack on in prayer, and I've been pushing this every month since we started prayer requests, we need to be praying for the brethren that God keeps them from evil. That in the last days, one of the last steps to the, us being caught up is the falling away. Brethren who once stood for absolute truth are falling away. Brethren who stood for zero tolerance for sin are now trying to make justification for sin. Uh, covetousness, which is idolatry. We all know who's had a problem with that recently. Uh, but he's not the only one. There's a lot of us. that could, We look in our lives and say, Oh, am I starting to covet something that that thing that's not necessarily a sin becomes a sin because it becomes idolatry? I ask the Lord, I live here on the coast, am I coveting the beach? Am I putting things before the Lord? I have a garden. I have chickens. I have a miniature schnauzer, a Victorian. Is there things in my life that I'm putting before you, Lord, that come before you? If God asked me to give all this up, would I give it up like that, or would I whine and complain or try to find reasons not to give it up? Okay? But primarily, things can become evil in the brethren's lives. The old man keeps trying to creep up. You get temptation. Part of my prayer request I'm going to talk about temptation from the world, temptation from family members. Okay? We need to be praying for the brethren, starting with yourself first, saying, Lord, keep me from evil, keep me from trying to resurrect the old man, or backpedaling, or turning my back on absolute truth. And then we pray for the brethren. Okay, that's why I put that in there. We need to be praying for one another. Right? That we stay the course. Keep living for Jesus Christ every day. That's what it means to look for the imminent return of Jesus Christ, is that you're living for Him every day. When you stop looking for the imminent return of Jesus Christ... It goes hand in hand. You stop living for him every day. And I know brethren who have. Right. Romans 1.9 reads, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Paul's always praying for the brethren. There might be special brethren that he calls out by name, because he knows them, or they desperately need prayer more than others. But he's praying for the brethren as a whole. Amen. Romans 10, 1 says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. So I always throw that in there that yes, it's okay to pray for lost loved ones, neighbors, friends, co-workers, the lost world. It's okay to pray that Lord give them every opportunity to get saved. Lord, I want to see them get saved. That should be your heartfelt desire, not who cares. They want to go to hell, let them go to hell. If, if that's where they're heading and they turn their back on God and they end up there, they end up there. 
But our heartfelt desire is we want to see him get saved. Paul's heartfelt desire wasn't to see him go to hell, was to see him get saved. Okay? That's what our prayers are. We're to pray that God will open the eyes of brethren that have backslidden, that God will open the eyes of, of uh, lost family members, friends, co-workers, neighbors, people you pass on the street. And we'll talk about my experience in these last couple of weeks. But uh, let's go down the list. Okay, prayer requests. Please put your prayer requests, if you have some that you want to share with the brethren, in the comment section. Remember, the Bible says, confess your faults one to another. We don't want detail. I don't want detail. You can fare your faults one to another. If you're struggling with something and you need prayer for it, by all means, in the comment section. Okay, I struggle with Hollywood movies, TV shows, video games. That's me. Uh, if you sh uh, struggle with alcohol, if you struggle with uh, other things, fornication, uh, gluttonous, whatever, you know, lying, not bearing false witness. Okay? There's some brethren out there that owe a lot of brethren apologies. Um, and there's times where I've screwed up and got talked into the backbiting and whispering where you find yourself gossiping, but backbiting and whispering. Okay? Make sure you can put those things in there, but we don't need detail. Okay? That's between you and the Lord. Make sure you take it to you and the Lord. If you want to do detail, tell the Lord. He wants to hear it. But the brethren, it's just confess your faults one to another. Okay. And when you heard Victoria, this just came up, when you heard Victoria, really, she's getting old. Okay, so what, I'll start my prayer request with this for Victoria, my mentor now, is that she's getting old. I'd be blessed if she lasts another year or two. I'd be very blessed. She, God's been doing really well. We had her teeth taken out, and you guys prayed for her. Thank you, brothers and sisters Christ. Primarily thank God for getting us through that. She's got like three or four teeth left, and that's it. Um, arthritis, she's starting to lose hearing in one ear. I think she's almost lost it completely in one ear. Um, but she still has a lot of energy. She's still running all over the place like a young, young dog, but she just has certain little problems here and there. Um, but you guys are praying for her. But you heard her earlier, she's, sometimes she'll make noises like she's having a problem swallowing. Um, but she's been doing good, so thank you for your prayers. So that's one of my prayer requests. Um, and then one of the things I still have on here is prayer for my knees. I'm always praying for my knees. I like to do, I miss doing the stand-up. And I'm starting to get back to them as long as I can keep the video short, like within 30 minutes. I like standing outside. You get to see the beautiful background. And it's God's creation. It's the greatest place to preach is outdoors, I believe. That's, that's just me. I love preaching outdoors. Um, I love listening to preaching when people are standing outdoors and preaching uh, and you can see the trees and the wind blowing and, and everything. It's like, you know, you're not limited to a building. It lets you know that you can preach anywhere, in any home, anywhere. Okay, you're not limited to a specific building, uh, you know, organized religion. So, uh, but my knees, I'm always praying because I tell you, my knees and my lower back start to hurt when I stand still in one place. Um, I can walk for long periods of time. I love walking. My, my shoes just got wore out. I had to put on my brand new shoes, so now i got to order a couple more pairs of shoes. I get cheap shoes, so maybe that's why they don't last as long, but I tend to go through the sole of the shoe where your heel is. Not heel, this is the heel. <laughs> I forgot what this is called, but right before your toes. Um, that's where it wears out and starts getting a hole right through the shoe. And then I realized that that shoe I should have replaced a, a while ago. And when I put on a brand new shoe, I, my back feels a lot better because I have shoes that have been worn down too much and they don't wear properly. So part of it's me. I need to stay on top of switching shoes on time. But the other thing is I want prayer to be able to stand and, you know, be a servant to the Lord and be a servant to the brethren. Okay. Um, God keeps me on the straight and narrow, especially I've been tried and tested a lot in this last month. Um, uh, having to deal with family, be around family. Um, prayer for me and for all the brethren to be true to his word and not get distracted. And I had to put dash marks in here, world and flesh. Not get distracted by the world and not to get distracted by your flesh. Okay. So I went and uh, did a family gathering for the last two, two and a half weeks. And having to be around lost family members and being around family members that are... I guess what bothers me more than anything, Brother and Sister Christ, is being around family members that profess to be Christians 
and then you see in the things that they talk about, laugh about, and the things that they have no problem with, it's like God has a problem with it. God, I mean, they laugh about things that I, I, I used to laugh at, and I don't laugh at anymore, but when you start hanging around that atmosphere, all of a sudden you'll catch yourself smirking or make, maybe laughing a little bit, and you're like, wait a second, no. And you have to put the flesh down and say, that wasn't funny. Um, getting into a few arguments with family members um, and disagreements. It's like, and they just don't understand. Why? Because they're lost. They have blinders on. They don't want the truth. And I've tried preaching the truth to every one of them, and none of them want the truth. And there's only one family member I have, my uncle, that I believe is saved. And he loves the King James Bible, and he's all about what does the Bible say, not what the world says. Right? But for the most part, it's just that, that, that they start talking about movies. I gave up movies. I even talked to him and said, I gave up movies. I really don't want to talk about movies. And somehow the conversation seems to come all the way back around to movies, all the way back around to TV shows, come back around to video games. I'm like, I gave that stuff up for the Lord. Right? It offended the brethren. First, it's a sin. It, it offended the brethren. It was causing division. I gave it up. I don't need it in my life. This is what I need in my life. I need to be a servant to the brethren. And I can't do that if I have something in my life that's not biblical, it's not a command of God, that's getting in the way of my fellowship with the brethren and serving the Lord. Right? It's gone. Right? So the things that are creeping in is you have the world, the, the, you know, getting totally distracted by what's going on in the world. Brethren, don't get distracted by what's going on in the world. God's got that all under control. Be focused on your life and how you're living for Jesus Christ every day. Okay, be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, the devil going around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Focus primarily on your life and how you're living for the Lord. Don't be so distracted what's going on clear across the world. Uh, I understand I have brethren that if things are, I'm not going to be specific, but there's things going on across the world that are affecting some brethren more than others because they're closer to it. I understand that. But I'm saying we, we're, we're not supposed to be going out there with swords and guns and trying to force the world to live according to this book. Okay? We're not supposed to be force converting people. Okay? You want the truth? Okay, no. But I do want the truth, so I'm going to live my life for Jesus Christ, whether you like it or not. Even if it costs me my life, I'm going to do it. That's how our attitude is supposed to be and how we're supposed to be living, brothers of Christ. Don't get too worried about it and try to, you know, get into a fight and battle. Especially when it's just like fighting with, with family members on truth. There's times where I had to stop myself mid-argument and just let them go. And let them think they're right or let them think they won. Because it's like, they're lost. You're arguing with a lost person. Until they truly get saved and born again, they're not going to get it. To them, it's okay. But to me, with the Holy Spirit bearing witness with my conscience through the Word of God that you're hiding in your heart and living it, that's wrong, but they don't see it. Okay. So I could use prayer for that. Okay. I'm always praying for family members to get saved, that God gives them every opportunity to get saved, every opportunity to get saved. Okay. Uh, patience. That was the last time I was asking for some patience. Definitely need patience because I'm always trying to push, push, push. Well, Lord, what should I do next? I need to do this. I need to do that. We can do this. We can do that. There's times where God says, you know what? Just turn on Alexander Scorby and listen to the Bible being read, sat on the deck, and talk with me for a while. Slow down. Be patient. Just pray with me for a while. I'm talking about men in ministry. My patience when it comes to ministry. Slow down. Take some time between you and the Lord. You know, uh, I need to be patient. God will show me things to do. Okay? I'll be honest with you. What I realize more than anything with, with what I've watched in other brethren and in my own life, when you start getting what's, what they call writer's block, when you start feeling like you don't know what to preach on or what to do, there's two reasons for that. One, there's stuff in your life that's getting in the way. What do we say? If you have sin in your life, God will not hear your prayers. If you're, I'm sorry, if you hold sin in your heart, not sin in your life. We all have sin. We all make mistakes, brothers and Christ. Repent, forsake, get your heart right with the Lord. I'm talking about there might, there's, what I see in some brethren is they're holding the ministry. They're holding iniquity in their heart and they won't let it go. They try to justify it. They've betrayed brethren to keep it. 
They stabbed brethren in the back. They perverted the scriptures because they hold an iniquity in their heart and they don't want to give it up. And then they start getting with like writer's block. I don't know what to preach. I don't know what to preach. It's because God's not speaking through you right now. You need to get rid of that sin. You need to get your heart right with the Lord. But the other reason, like I said, just said earlier, God could be saying, slow down to men in ministry. Slow down. Take it easy. I know there's a big fight going on. We need to fight, fight, fight. The good fight. Okay? But there's times where God wants you to spend a day with Him. Okay? We need to learn to be patient. There's times where I've put out studies and later I'm like, oh, I could have done this or that or this would have been a great part of it and I'll end up having to do another study on it. Or when if I had just been patient, God showed me a day later that I could have done this with that study. Okay? And that happens sometimes. Okay? We do need to get the studies out. We do need to get the preaching going. We need to make sure that, brothers and sisters Christ, that we keep staying in the Word of God and staying in prayer. But God, I just really need patience. And there's times where I don't have it. And I need prayer for patience, to be patient in the ministry. In my walk with the Lord, there's times where we need to be patient. Okay, Lord, I look at the world. Why isn't this happening? Why isn't that happening? How come you're letting this get that well, they're doing this? I know now not to say, I was about to say, how come you're letting them get away with it? I used to say that as a babe in Christ. But as you study the Word of God, you start learning about what God, the prophecies, what God promised, and how He said the world's gonna get this way. It's no longer they're getting they're not getting away with it. If they don't truly get saved and born again, they're not getting away with it. Okay, these brethren that have fallen away um, and made mistakes. I'm one of the brethren that have not necessarily fallen away, but I've made mistakes. Okay, I've made big mistakes in my walk with the Lord. Uh, we're not getting away with it. It's not like, oh, I'm, I'm getting off scot-free. That's the easy believism. We who are truly saved and born again realize that there's still the judgment seat of Christ. I'm still going to have to answer for all my works, whether they be good or bad. I'm not getting away with anything. I'm going to have to answer for it someday. I was just reading that verse a couple of days ago. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Therefore, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Everyone gives an account of himself to God. We need to be patient sometimes, brothers of Christ. And wait for God to say, do this, do that. We're always jumping the gun. We want to do something for the Lord. We want to be a servant to the brethren. We want to fight a good fight, but sometimes you can jump the gun. We'll get it in another video. Jump the gun about fighting fights that are, what is it, uh, words to no profit. And then uh, straining at a gnat and swallowing a camel. That's another study I have over here. All right. There's times where you can jump the gun and you're not fighting a good fight because you just desperately want to fight for the Lord. But the Lord says, hey, you need to be patient. You need to be patient. So I need prayer for patience, okay? Um, we talk about faults, ministry, garden. We had a cold storm come through while they're trying to they're trying to put in a whole new um, cable system for the internet, and we had ice storm an ice storm come through a couple of times where we had hail, and um, when I pray this is going for my garden praying for my garden because I want to try to keep the video short but uh, sometimes I fail a lot I just I love the brother and sister of Christ and I want to get everything in there, um, the garden I had my zucchini died on me and my uh, squash died on me and my corn uh, died on me it just the weather got too cold it got warm enough where they started selling them hey it's good if you have a greenhouse I think some of them survived in greenhouses but I don't have a greenhouse so when it seems like it's gonna get warm and stay warm I go and try to buy those plants because it's got to stay warm and I bought them I guess too early and the weather wasn't just right and it got really cold, really rainy, really windy, had ice and they died. So uh, the onions are still striving good. Um, I looked at my tomatoes, they might not be doing too well but they tended, they, they still fared better because I have them set up against the wall when the sun shines it reflects the heat off the wall and helps them you know, stay warm. But they're still supposed to be a warm plant. Um, and I had some other plants that I planted out there that did good, but those three things died on me. Um, and I've been trying to learn how to make my own um, corn for making popcorn. Okay. So that's why I've been trying to grow some corn. I've been trying to le learn some things, how to can and stuff like that. Uh, 
the garden, going with food, but the garden, I do need a prayer for the garden, brother and sister Christ, but a few days ago, um, I got back, and uh, actually no, it was a week and a half ago, I got back for a few days before I had to take off again, so once again, I could have tried to make a really quick video and thrown it out there, and I probably should have, instead of just gone a, a month almost without a video, I apologize for that, brother and sister Christ, I got back for a few days, family's here, and getting ready to take off up the, or down the coast, uh, California. Uh, there's some beautiful country there, but the people down there desperately need Jesus Christ. Um, up here too, but down there it's just, we went through some, I'm going all over the place, different parts of town, but I went through a trip. But when I came back here, I was blessed that uh, I got to do another bear. Okay, so I got some more bear meat in the freezer, praise the Lord. Uh, enough bear meat to get me through another year or two, uh, which is amazing. But it's hard work, once again, uh, butchering a bear, being a hunter, it's hard work. So like I said, I have a lot more appreciation for people who do the hunting. Uh, even when I was fishing, learning how to fillet a fish and uh, clean a fish, and stuff like that. Fishing is fun, but then you have to do the cleaning, and then you have to do, uh, you know, the, uh, I like the fl flaying the fish, um, and then putting it away in the bags, freezing them, and eating fresh fish, freezing the other fish so you can have them throughout the next six months. Um, it's it's hard work, and people are starting to get lazy, and, and there's times where it's like, this first second, I start to miss buying that food from the store because it's so easy just to grab the meat from the store or the farmer's market. I mean, it's a little bit more expensive at the farmer's market, but grabbing it. But there's some joy you have when you work with your hands and you accomplish good things, good things, not bad things, good things with your hands. Hunting and fishing is one of them. You know, you build a table out of wood or something. When you finish, it's hard work, but when you finish and you're very detailed and you make sure to wipe it down, the oils, and make it just look the way you want it when it's completely finished, there's a lot of joy you can take in that. Okay? Now, I didn't say pride. I said joy. You thank the Lord for it. And you have a, it was a lot of hard work. You tell yourself, I don't know if I'll do this again, but our running joke with my neighbors and everything is that when we're doing it, it's very hard, hard on our back, standing there at a table, for me being at my standing at the table in one place for eight to 12 hours straight. Um, and it's like, we the running joke is, is that we say this is our last year doing it, and then two years later when we're running low on meat, we forget all the hard work it was, <laughs> and we'll do it again. And then we'll say, oh, okay, this time will be the last time. And it's just that's the running joke because we do it because it's it's free meat. Um, I mean, you have to buy a tag, but it's very inexpensive. Okay, it's a very cheap way to have healthy meat. Good, I mean, healthy, good food. Okay. So the garden is the way I'm doing it for good food. And I, like I said, I got a bear and then hopefully get to do some more fishing this summer uh, when I run out of fish again. Uh, that's what I've been doing for meat, and I've been saving. I'm just helping you, brother, so you save a lot of money. I go to the stores and save a lot of money when I don't do a lot of junk. I get out all the junk food, and the meat was expensive. So you get the meat out, and that way you can still have meat every night or every other night. Um, it's very inexpensive when you're getting it yourself. So I really could use prayer for that. Mm -hmm. uh, there was also construction going on on the road for the internet, which the internet was down sometimes. The internet was running like a snail sometimes where I couldn't hardly use it because I think they went down to one wire for the whole neighborhood because they're replacing all the others. And just there's everybody's, since there was a lot of rain and a lot of hail, everybody was at home using their internet. Um, but I also had construction going on here. The update on the wood stove prayer request. The pellet stove is out of the house. Uh, I remember watching a brother in Christ, um, he, like I said, right now, I, I'm his enemy, uh, but I remember watching a brother in Christ when he was trying to get a wood stove up the stairs, and it, I knew it was heavy, but I didn't realize how heavy those things can be, um, trying to get it out of the house, having to build a ramp down the steps, um, to get it down, it was a lot easier getting it out of the house, I, I couldn't imagine how hard it would be to try to get it up the ramp, because you're going up gravity, trying to go up the steps, uh, that pellet stove was heavy, just 
hard iron, very heavy. So praise the Lord, the pellet stove is out of the house. Um, they were able to tile up the wall, just a couple tiles, and the Lord blessed me. The guy had the tiles that matched my tiles. He's like, I'm not going to charge you for that. They're just two extra pieces, I guess, from another job. He's like, they already match and everything. He's like, praise the Lord. So, uh, and he had leftover grout that matched. So he's really nice working with me, praise the Lord. And um, so we got the tile on, and the grout's got to be finished. Everything kind of got put on hold when I got family here for a while. And then hopefully we can get it back. But I've got two beams that he's already, the contractor that I've hired on the side of the house that's dry rotting just as it connects at the end of the house. You have two beams that the, the, the tile roof or the shingles are on. You have two beams that come together and right when it comes together it's rotting hardcore on one and you can see spit, spots on this one where it's dry rotting. So I asked him to replace both. So that cut into my, um, <laughs> my wood stove fun, but it was, it's important that that gets done. Um, so he's going to get that done. So when that gets done, all I'm waiting now is the Lord's blessed me with being able to put money aside every month um, to uh, get a wood stove, a good wood stove to go in there. Okay. So I should, Lord willing, and um, me not making any mistakes, uh, I should have a wood stove before next winter. Easy. There's a lot of other things that need to be fixed on the house. Needs to be fixed on the house. It was an old house when I bought it, but I love this house, and I'm so blessed being able to live here. All right? It's beautiful here. Um, so, just prayer for the wood stove that things still keep going according to plan, and things that you need to get fixed on this house. I'll be praying for you, brother, sister, Christ out there that have homes that you got to fix things um, for cars and everything. I just had to get to schedule my car for a tire rotation. Um, I'm going to have to do an oil change and alignment on the front while they're looking at it. And then something to do with the starter. I'm going to have to have them look at the starter because there was a couple times when it got cold enough that the starter kicked over a few times and didn't start. And I've been told by some family members that, hey, that's not a good sign. That's a sign that the starter might be starting to go out. <laughs> Using the word start a lot. But the starter, when you turn the key, something can be loose wire-wise or it could be that it's going out. I need to get that checked. So there's always something, always something around the corner that needs to get done. But I trust the Lord that what happens, God will help me get through it. And I pray for the brethren that are going through those things. And I could use prayer for going through those things. Mm -hmm. So, and the family vacation. I'm not going to gossip or nothing. I'm just going to say we all have those family members that profess to be saved. That when they try to talk about this, they just fumble all over the place. This being the Word of God found in the Bible. Okay, the Word of God is found in the King James Bible, the Holy Bible. Okay. They make a mess, and it's always trying when you start hanging out because you're not technically. I don't hang out with my friends, and old lost friends anymore, or anything. But your family's your family. Um, there's times where you don't hang out with your family. If you got a family member that's really bad, there's times where you just don't hang out with them. But my thing issue with the family members that I was hanging out with, uh, my mom, my dad, my uh, brother, um, and then I got to visit my grandma and my uncle while I was in Medford for a few days um, before everybody came here. Um, it's just, it's hard dealing with them because they like to talk about things you gave up that are sinful and wicked. Like it's fun, it's cool, it's awesome, it's funny, ha, ha, ha. And, and your flesh starts getting, well, I want to laugh. I want to I want to be a part of this. And it's like, no, you're not a part of that. I gave that up for the Lord. And um, just not having much in common. They're all talking and off doing their things. And I'm going, I went for walks with my cue cards on the beach, uh, did some sea glass, I don't have the back here, hunting down some sea glass, and I got to do a train ride, an old-fashioned train ride, which was great, uh, looking at God's creation, a train ride out in the mountainside, which was amazing. Um, and then a lot of out to eat, so I, part of me wants to go on a fast for a few days, because uh, I'm used to just eating uh, three small meals a day. Um, sometimes I'll just eat two meals a day. Um, but they, we ate, I ate more food, I think, in the last week, week and a half to two weeks. I'll go as far as two weeks than I have in a month. You know, it just seems, it just feels like it because I'm just not used to the out to eat and big meals. Um, so I went on a trip, but the hard part is just 
I've already, it's one thing that said like when I first started doing these things when I got saved brother says Christ and you'd hang out with family it's an opportunity for me to witness for Jesus Christ it's an opportunity for me to witness for Jesus Christ but now I've witnessed to them I've told them about absolute truth okay I had one family member tell me, you believe there was a flood? He professes to be a Christian. And he says, you believe there was a worldwide flood? And I, at first I thought, I was just like, yeah, the Bible says there was a worldwide flood. And a few sentences later he's like, well, it's just a translation translated by men. <sighs> You can't, it's like we can't reach them. And sometimes I can't. I know what Jesus said, a uh, prophet is without honor except in his own country. And I'm paraphrasing, forgive me. And except in his own country. It's going to take somebody else coming by, and they've got to be broken. God's got to bring them to their knees. Bat, you know, the world's got to feel like it's falling apart and caving in on them. And they've got to, be, they've got to come to their knees, and it's going to take somebody else other than a family member to come to them and preach the truth that I'm preaching to them to get them to listen. Um, and it's frustrating because I love every single one of them, but they don't want the truth. I've... Brother Sister Christ, we talk about this all the time. People that are dancing their way to hell. They're smiling and laughing and, and, and having, a, having a great time all the ways they're going to hell. And no matter what you say to them, they're just not, they don't want to listen. They, they, especially the ones that think they're already saved. I'm a Christian. Yeah, but you don't look, you don't live like a Christian. God's word isn't hidden in your heart. Where's the new man, the new creature in Christ Jesus? The old man's supposed to be dead and buried, and you're supposed to be a new creature in Christ Jesus. You're supposed to be living for Jesus Christ every day. Jesus said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And then you hear someone who professes to be saved saying, oh, that's not important. It's just a translation. It's not important. And their life reflects it. They're all about fun and flesh. And there's this big thing going around. And as long as you're happy, as long as you're happy, God didn't promise happiness. Okay? that you're guaranteed to be happy 24-7, that when you get saved, everything's going to be perfect, everything's going to be great, and, and la-la land, as I call it, la-la land. Uh, no. He promised that when you get saved, that He will give you peace and hope. Remember, we're not given a spirit of fear, but of hope and love and a sound mind. Love, it's love hope, or love joy and a sound mind. I'm sorry, I'm trying to do that from memory. But happiness, you know, I was, people got on to me when I said fun is flesh. The word fun the, is not in the Bible. You can still use the word fun, but the word fun is not in the Bible. I did a teaching once showing that fun is flesh. When you actually look at the world's definition of what fun is, fun is flesh. It's you letting the flesh go rapid. Have, have a great time. Just the flesh is out of control. Jump on a two-wheelie two and just drive through the forest area going, you know, 30, 40 miles an hour. You know, it's flesh. You're letting the flesh get out of control and just letting the flesh have fun. Fun is flesh. And people got on to me for that. And it's like, I can say, it's just tough. I do need prayer and I pray for you, brothers and Christ. I love my family members. I don't, I can't say they won't get saved. I, I'm not going to do that because I got saved. Who would have thought I'd have gotten saved, brother Jesus Christ? Born again, truly born again, a false convert that was into the flesh, into the fun, into the world. And God brought me to my knees at, some, uh, at a point in my life, and I had to make a decision. Give my life to Jesus Christ or continue in the world. And this whole false, be easy believism that you don't have to give your life to Jesus, truly, truly give your life to Jesus Christ, just in words, but not in deed, but just in words you can say you did, but in deed, your actions, you don't have to give your life to Christ, you just have to believe in your head, and you can continue living as the old man. And these, I have family members that have been deceived in that. And there's no difference between them and the lost world. No difference between them and the lost world. So I, that's what I've been dealing with in the last uh, almost a month. Family members a lot, and um, and it was great to see them. I did have some, I did have fun, did have some good times. But the hardest the thing that breaks my heart the most is uh, 
anytime this came up, you know, it just, they're, they're clueless. They're just clueless. Right? They, they don't know who the real Jesus Christ, they, Jesus Christ is. I heard someone say that you don't know the Jesus you profess to believe in. It's not that, I always teach that there are many Jesuses out there, but there's only one true Jesus. You have a lot of fakes and frauds that are antichrists, and then you have the one true Jesus. But someone also said once to somebody that you don't even know the Jesus you profess to believe in. You have no clue who he is, and they don't. They have no clue who Jesus Christ is. Lord God Almighty, who has a zero tolerance for sin. Okay. Who's going to judge the world someday. Jesus is going to judge me, saved. He's going to judge them, lost. He's going to judge the whole world someday. Right? Uh, why were we created? You ask them, why were you created? Oh, to love God and to, you know, to, to live joyfully. And pe They couldn't even get that right. right. The Bible says, for thy pleasure we are and were created. We were created to please God. Does sin please God? No. Does the old man please God? No. And on and on and on and on. But it's all this this. Fake, easy believism is all about pleasing self while calling yourself a Christian. I just please myself and live how I want to live and do what I want to do. And if I want to believe it's bad, then it's bad. But if I believe it's okay, therefore it's okay. Ye can be as gods, knowing good and evil. I'm the authority. And that's this whole Christianity. I just get so frustrated. I don't want to go on and on. It's like I'm babbling. I apologize, brothers and sisters. I just get so frustrated because I love them. I want to see them get saved. I want to have brothers and sisters in Christ around here to talk to. Um, you know, and talk to about the Word of God and frustrations with the way the world's going or temptations with the flesh, you know, my faults, as the Bible says. It'd be nice to talk to someone face to face, you know, not through the computer, emails, Skypes, or videos. Um, it'd be nice to talk to brethren face to face. That's why I've been pushing a lot lately, praying for the brethren as a whole that we start forming house churches. Okay. You've had some brethren that have so been so used to the one man show and and not being accountable to anybody, and having uh, and, and they start getting above correction, and they could have a house church like that, and they refuse to, and they'll have excuses. And it's like, brothers of Christ, we desperately need to get back to doing things God's way, okay? This is the world's way, and we can use it uh, to God's glory. The internet, I'm putting it on my computer over here, the internet. But it would be good to get back to doing things God's way. Get back to doing house churches. Coming together, okay? Being there for one another physically to help each other out, especially through hard times. We're always talking about how there's hard times coming. And we desperately need to be praying for the body of Christ. But we also, it'd be easier to be there for each other if we're physically there for each other. So pray for house churches. Pray for brethren to come together. Uh, pray for brethren going through hard times. Right? Being struggling. Uh, my test was, uh, I was really tempted. And like I said, I failed the Lord a few times. I chuckled and I laughed at things that sh I should not have laughed at. And... You know, I started thinking of things that it took me a while. To, I had to go for a walk. I had to get some things like movies and TV shows out of my head. That uh, that's why I stay away from it. You know, no cable, no internet. Or I got internet. No cable, no movies, TV shows. Um, so they started talking about things I was oblivious to. Praise the Lord! Like, and I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I gave that up for the Lord. Didn't you see this new movie came out? No, I don't know, and I don't. I don't want to know. You know that kind of thing. I went uh, so. It was tough. So I'm sorry, Brothers of Christ, I haven't been out for a while, so I'm going to make a few more videos. That's why I'm indoors. I'm going to try to put together a few videos today and see what videos I can get out. Prayer request in the uh, comment section. I love my Brother Sister Christ. I'm praying for you. My email is still out there, so if you guys ever want to email me and talk to me. Um, I have a Skype account that I'm willing to talk to some brethren on Skype, and I have talked to brethren on Skype Uh Mainly, it uh, seems like when when it goes as far as Skype, I used to have brethren on Skype that I could fellowship with all the time, praise the Lord, but they all went their separate ways. Um, and not a lot, just a few. It's hard to find, so I don't want to get out like, I had tons. Mm. There's a few. Um, there's like three or four. 
but lately it seems the only time it goes to if someone wants to talk to me on uh, Skype is when they want to debate something or argue something. And it's like, well, I'm here. I'm, I, I just want you to know right now. I won't debate and I won't argue. If it feels like you're not going to listen and, and, you see, and it seems to you that I'm not going to listen, then we're done. I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to debate. Okay. Uh, you want to discuss the Word of God and see where I'm wrong? and the Bible's right, or where you're wrong and the Bible's right, but I guarantee you one thing, the Bible's always right. Okay. And you got men out there that are starting to get too pompous and too prideful and too arrogant that they're right, even if it goes against the Bible. And I pray, and I, I might have made mistakes like that in the past, but I pray that I don't make that mistake and I never get there. So I want to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Keep praying for me, brother says Christ. I'm going to keep praying for you. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. I love you, brother says Christ, and I'll see you in the next video.